In this video I want to show you about making the background and having it with a, a radial blur. Now this particular image I got from pixabay.com and the person who uploaded it has already put a sort of um, a white um, vi vignette around the picture to sort of help draw your eye in to the main subject and it is partly blurred already so it may not necessarily be the perfect subject for this particular video but it was the best one that I could find in the time that I had available um, so what you could do is this is with a very slight radial blur to the background and this next one is a much more pronounced radial blur so you can go either way or you could even use a different blur altogether because this is using a box blur but I will come back to that in a minute so what I'll do is I will shut down these ones and I will come back and we will start the video but first of all I just want to credit where I got the idea from which is from a Photoshop tutorial by Morgan Burks now she does mainly she wants to sell her products but she does do free tutorials and she does do I think there's other free stuff that you can get you know like mainly Photoshop stuff and like actions and whatever but it's worth looking at some of these tutorials because it may give you ideas for future affinity photo projects so that is enough of the accreditation I will just reset everything and I'll be back in a second to actually start the tutorial alright okay I have removed the sample images that I had earlier and we are now going to start the tutorial properly um, so the first thing you need to do is to duplicate your image you can just press Control and J or you can right click on the layer here and just click duplicate and as you can see it's control and J or command and J on a Mac now once you have your new duplicated layer we need to draw freehand round the subject um, and this is found in the menu for the rectangular marquee tool and it is the bottom item what we want the freehand selection tool and although there are various options for the which tool that you particularly use the freehand one is the one that you really want to use because we're just going to draw around the, the subject but you, you're not going to be coming close to I'm not, I mean not too far away either but we're just going to you just click and hold down the left mouse button and just draw around the subject and I'm not going to worry too much about these flyaway hairs and just come around and then I will come off the bottom of the picture and back round to my start position and when I let go of the mouse button it will make the selection so what we're going to do now is we're going to fill this area that is selected now we do this from the edit menu and you come to edit and fill or shift F5 and you will get this little menu here where you get various options and the one we're going for is in painting and this is like a larger version of the in painting tool brush where you you paint an area and it will select pixels from nearby to fill that area with those pixels this is doing this but in a much larger way so as you can see from this sort of sample of what it's going to do um, you're getting the same textures tones and colors from the area and it is filling that area with them I mean you will get some repetitive repeating things because it is sort of cloning from the outside area but that's not a problem because most of this will be lost when we bring the lady back into the picture but it just means that the edges around the lady will be the same as the background and it should 
do away with what you sometimes get when you select a subject like this you know using the proper sort of polygonal tool you get a slight haze or glow around the outside from where it has been cut out but doing it this way hopefully we will do away with that sort of halo effect around the subject we're cutting out so select in painting and then click apply and we just have to wait for the program to do the in painting process which is now done now we don't need this selection area anymore so I'm going to press Control and D to get rid of that selection area and at first glance you'd be hard pressed to know that there was sort of ever anybody there because it's done a fairly good job of doing the in painting now you don't have to do this but I'm going to do this for a future part of the um, tutorial I'm going to duplicate this layer and then I'm going to hide it because I'm going to come back to it later on but you don't have to do this you just need these two layers here so once you have this layer here we're now going to add the blur effect so you come up to filters blur and radial blur now as you can see this is on 7.6 and that is that very dramatic blur I mean obviously you can come even much further and have whatever effect that you want or if you want a very subtle blur I think the the first one I did was on one and obviously the more dramatic one was on 7.6 so for this tutorial I'm going to just try and find somewhere in the middle let's go with 3.7 and click apply so now we have that what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lower the opacity of this so we will be bringing it back up to 100 but I'm just going to lower the opacity just so I can see the lady coming through from the layer below and then I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer which is this symbol here so I'll just click on that to add a layer mask and because it is a white layer mask there's no visible uh, effect because it's allowing everything to come through so what we're going to do is we're going to paint black onto this so I need the paintbrush tool and I need it in black and I'm going to start with 100% opacity and I'm going to have to harden this quite low it's on 5 now because we can see the lady below I can now know where I want to paint and it is on the mask that we are painting this black so let me just increase this brush size a bit here and I will just paint over the main areas not going too close to the edges just yet and reduce the brush size and get the as much of this as I can quite quickly and right, almost there right so that's the main part so now I can bring the opacity of this back up to a hundred because I now know where she is roughly and I will just make sure I'm back on the mask only and I'm going to lower the opacity down to about around the 50 percent mark and then I'm just going to get the rest of the lady but where the edges are and because it's a, a lower opacity it's not going to be such a harsh harsh transition so this is where you can if you want to you can just get some of those flyaway hairs that you may have missed when you were doing the selection but because they're in the layer that's underneath 
it is much easier to sort of bring them back doing it this way than maybe trying to select them all. So I think we're almost there. A few flyaway hairs on this side. Right, pretty much there. Right, that's going to be good enough, I think. Now, I, I, this bit here, I have sort of lost a bit of the blur there, so I can now change this to white. This is the beauty of using a mask. And I can paint some of that blur back in that I may have missed. Or taken out by mistake. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the hardness up to 100%, come back to black. Just so I can get this edge a bit neater. Just need to be, be a bit more careful when you're doing this bit because with the hardness at 100% it's very easy to just come over. Right, so basically I think that's about it. So we now have the subject with the radial ble blur behind. And so you could now save or export it under a new name and that would be the end of this tutorial. But coming back to the layer that I saved earlier, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to duplicate this mask that and then I'm going to move it up. <coughs> I've just moved the whole layer, let me go back to where that was. I just wanted to move the ma that one mask, there we go better so I can unhide that one now and then I will hide the radial blur layer so assuming I've done the same thing as previously I just want to show that you you can don't have to stick with radial blur that is just the subject of the original Photoshop tutorial so you could pick a different blur and then go through the same process of adding the layer mask and painting the subject back in so quickly having a look at some other blurs that you could use like I said in the introduction I did a box blur um, what other blurs we got filters Gaussian is fairly standard um, got motion blur so you could sort of have them coming in one direction or another so you've got all these different blurs you don't have to stick to radial that was just the subject of the Photoshop tutorial um, one last look we'll have a look at the zoom blur so that could be quite effective as well the zoom blur no, it really does sort of highlight the person in the picture so that is the end of the tutorial you know wh whichever blur that you choose that is one way of highlighting the subject so thank you for watching and goodbye